Hello, everybody. This is Mike Nelson. Make sure to subscribe to the Mike Nelson Show right here on YouTube. I want to thank everybody who's already subscribed to the channel from around the world. Today, i got a pretty cool guest. We've got a Trey Gadler of a Dead Man's Hand. How are you doing today, Trey? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem. So Trey's on a band called uh, Dead Man's Hand right now, but talk to me a little about uh, you were in another group uh, before that, right? Uh, talk to me kind of a little bit about your uh, musical journey, you know, so people can get a little, you know, little know a little bit more about you. Talk to me about about that. Um, wow, man, I've been doing this stuff for a really, really, really long time. I started uh, started playing in bands probably very early 90s and have been doing it nonstop ever since. Um the band before this one, I was in a band called Azrael's Bane, uh, kind of a progressive metal thing um, that we did. Yeah, we put out a couple records and had some success, played uh, all over the country and, uh, did, you know, did some international stuff and had a good run. Um, and then we started this thing. It's a completely different sound than what we were doing in the past. Um, but, you know, we're having fun with it. Now, talk to me about what you're doing right now, Dead Man's Hand. When did this project begin? You guys are uh, based uh, out of, out in Texas. Talk to me about the project. Yeah, we're from Houston, Texas. Um, this started out as a uh, as a side project, really. Um, I, I had written some stuff that I wanted to do. It was completely outside the genre that I was doing at the time. Um, and I just kind of wrote some songs. I stuck them on a the shelf and was saving them for when I had a project that I could do them in and um, started off just called some friends and got together. It was supposed to be just a, a side project solo thing. Um, I was just going to do a record and I was back in, I think 2011, I think been a while. Um, and we, you know, we played around with that for a bit and, but through the process, all of us uh, really discovered that we really, liked what we were doing and uh it became a band so now it's a full-time band um for a long time it's been kind of a side project for all the guys involved but in the last year or so we've all kind of shifted our focus to where this is the main thing for all of us and uh you know so we're working on uh getting a record out now um first single just came out last month and uh we're you know we're all in on it now so it's rolling Tell me about uh, some of the influences or inspirations uh, behind uh, this project. Of course, a uh, Southern rock band, you would say. Um, talk to me about kind of some inspirations or some artists that maybe kind of influenced you to kind of shift gears from what you were previously pl playing uh, before. Yeah, it's kind of a lot. Man, It's there's a whole lot of stuff that goes into this influences-wise. Um, you know, the stuff that I grew up on, the Roots Rock stuff in the 70s and early 80s, um, bands like... Uh, Oh, I don't know, like Bob Seger, Tom Petty, that kind of stuff. Um, and there was also, you know, the the typical Southern rock stuff, bands like Leonard Skinner and uh, the Allman Brothers and that kind of thing, which finds its way into it, too. And then there's even uh, I'm a huge Steve Earle fan, which, uh, you know, I've kind of some of that's in there. It, it's just it's a whole lot of different uh different influences all dumped to do a pot kind of mixed up, you know, uh, I would really, this was just kind of um, about trying to write some songs that were more uh, lyric oriented, you know, it, it's it, not, not as much emphasis on, on uh, like my old band, man, we were all about like shred and just, you know, musicianship and just tearing it up this one's more about focused on the song and the melody the lyric and stuff it, right and try to write some catchy hooky stuff um that's kind of in a more of a roots rock uh vein the southern thing comes into play uh mainly just because of where we're from you know we're from texas and um there's a lot of that that kind of permeates everything that you hear down here really you know um uh you know bands like zz top stuff like that um there's some of that in what we do too I, I don't know that any of it's really uh done on purpose it's just kind of the way it has worked out now talk to me about you you mentioned that of course with this group you guys are focusing more on the uh, songwriting not so much the uh of course technicality behind the music so when you write these songs is it a totally different process uh than before 
Oh, yeah. I mean, well, I mean, every band's different, you know, so it, it depends on the guys you're working with. This band, um, it's generally either myself or our guitar player, John Adams, that writes the, the songs. And usually we'll do it alone. Like, I'll write a song, bring it in, show it to John first, and we'll kind of flesh it out and then take it into the band, the rest of the band, and then those guys add their two cents to it and it becomes a song but and or, and and john does the same thing where he'll write something bring it in show it to me and we work it through the process um you know i've been in other bands where we all wrote together collectively at the same time in in the rehearsal room you know it's it, it really completely depends on the on the the guys you're working with and how and the chemistry in that band and what works best for that band this band so far that's pretty much what's worked best um i'll usually start off and write something where I'll write the, you know, the, the bones of it, you know, the, the, the chord progressions and the melodies and, and, uh, and bring it into John and him and I will kind of flesh it out. And then he does the same thing with stuff he writes. And then we bring it in, we show it to our, our rhythm section and those guys add their, you know, their thing. And they, they add so much. I mean, the songs change so much once you, you throw in a, you know, a drummer's input, the bass player's input, things change, but so it's collective in that regard, but they they all they always seem to start, the, you know, the initial stages of anything we write these days is just by one or, or myself or John. Now with the uh, this project uh, with uh, Dead Man's Hand, um, you guys uh, formed what is it ten years ago or so? So what what took the band uh, this long to finally get like you know this album done? Because you guys have never was this the first single you guys ever released? Uh, the Devil's Do yeah, and all these did. years. We did an EP uh, back when we first got together that was done. I mean, we we did that thing in a weekend, you know, so it was like it's basically a glorified demo. We went ahead and put it out, but it was under uh, the band used to be, be called Trey Gadler and Dead Man's Hand. And uh, that was back when it was just getting started, you know, and uh, now that it's become it's a band. I mean, we're not my project anymore it's our project so we changed the name now it's just dead man's hand and so this is the first album we've done you know under that moniker and uh it's the first one we've actually spent the time to really do you know like the proper recording and um you know, putting a, enough attention to detail and stuff on it um timing wise i think it was just mainly because we all had a lot of other stuff going on everybody in the in my band is you know, in other bands too. And, uh, you know, this, this dead man's hand was for a lot of years was kind of a, uh, a side project for most of us. Um, but thing, you know, it, it, things kind of aligned where we had some more time to focus on it and, and we did, you know, and then once we did, we realized we got a really, really good thing going. And, uh, that's when it was just kind of like, okay, this is cooler than anything else I'm doing, man. So I'm going to, I'm going to focus all my attention on this, you know, and I think all of us, all the guys in the band kind of have that same kind of feeling about it. And um, so it's just become much more of a focal point. Now with uh, this group, uh, Dead Man's Hand, how was the uh, process recording this album? Did you guys have, go to a regular studio? What, when was this recorded? Uh, yeah, we did. Last year, uh, we went up to, uh, to Missouri, Acadia Valley, Missouri. Uh, a good friend of ours, Greg Gill, has a studio they're out in the middle of nowhere in the country. I mean, it's uh, like, I mean, that town, I, I don't know, populate, very small population, very small town. It's really cool. You get away from everything, no distractions, you know. And uh, we did most of it there. Um, Greg has come in to Houston now and then with a mobile uh, studio. And we've done some, a little bit of tracks here. I've done a few vocal tracks down here. Um, and I think John's done some guitar solos and stuff here, but for most of it we did in Greg's studio. It's Endeavor Studios in Acadia Valley, Missouri. Um, and it was it, it we were we worked with him in the past. Greg's originally from Houston as well. Um, had a had a studio here in town that I did two Azrael's Bane records with him. John did two Love and War records with him. So, you know, had a lot of familiarity with him, working with him specifically. He's a genius engineer and he's a great producer and he's a really great guy so it was kind of a natural fit for us to work with him again and uh the bonus was being able to get out of town you know and just get out there and i mean man we were 
in the middle of absolute nowhere. <laughs> it, it, it was cool, man. The like zero distractions, you know. I mean, like I couldn't even get cell signal out there hardly, you know. So it was like it was like you're just there and you work with no distractions whatsoever. It was really cool. Now, not to give anything away with the album uh, Dust Bowl, uh, what can you tell our listeners or viewers about uh, this album? You know, with the significance with the album title, uh, is there a story behind this album? Talk to me about it. It's just a collective, a collection of songs. There's ten songs on it. Um, the the album title is there. We actually have a song called Dust Bowl, um, and I just like the the imagery that it that title conveys. You know, um, we we wrote a song that's about uh, some things that people experienced during that era. Uh, we write a lot of stuff that's kind of historical based, you know, I've got lots of songs that are based on things that happened, you know, a hundred years ago or whatever. And, uh, you know, the dust bowl thing, which happened in I, what I, 1930s, I guess was just a really, uh, sad and <laughs> like dark period in American history, but we wrote a song about it, you know? And, um, so there's a song on there called dust bowl. That's, that's about that time frame And, it's got a few make believe characters in it and just they go through some stuff that that somebody during that time might have gone through. Um and we've got a we've got several songs that are in that same kind of vein. They're historical stuff, tell stories about things that happened in the past. Just they're true, but they're you know, you use the true factual stuff as a basis to tell a story about a character, you know. And uh we've got a couple a handful of songs like that. Um and then we've just got some, you know, some cool rootsy rock and roll stuff on there too man it's just a it, it's a it's pretty varied on what the record sounds like you know that i don't think there's any two songs that sound remotely alike so um the only thing they really have in common is just they're all very uh um melody and uh storytelling oriented all of them you know and uh that's what we're, that's what we're going for and i think you know we, we kind of nailed it the, the sound we're trying to achieve i think we got it so uh our first singles out now um people may have heard it called uh, devil's do and that's a pretty good uh indicator of what the rest of the record sounds like honestly talk to me about that song devil's do the story behind it uh maybe what's what's it about and uh you know more about that song um whew, I, I guess the song is really it's kind of a it's about the consequences of the choices that you make, you know, um, good or bad decisions and, and the price you pay for them. You know, it's, it's, a, it, it's about making bad decisions and the consequences and, and the struggle to, uh, you know, when you're sitting there trying to make a decision about something where, you know, one side of you says, man, this would be really fun and this and really cool. And the other side of you is going, yeah, man, that's really not a good idea. And, uh, <laughs> Uh, you know, the opening line of that song says, there's an angel sitting on my shoulder and the devil's sitting on the other side, you know, and it's, it's the conversation that you have. We all have in our own head about those kind of things. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's something everybody has relates to because everybody goes through that, you know? So, um, and there, there's a lot of that kind of stuff on this record. So, and, and that song, it just, I think it's relatable. Um, it's got a catchy chorus and you know uh it's definitely relates some things that i've gone through in my own life you know um decision making and what have you and uh just decided to write a song about it you know it's and it it's got a kind of a funky i don't almost country kind of riff on it that um makes the whole thing kind of work you know Talking about the uh, the music video, you got a pretty cool music video with that track. Uh, what's the story behind it? You know, maybe shout out the director for that uh, film for that uh, video. Talk to me about the video. Yeah, um, we recorded here in Houston at Magic Studios um, with a director, Kareem K. Uh, Kareem is he, he's got a recording studio and he also does uh, a lot of video production stuff there. Just incredibly talented guy with a great crew. Um, all those guys are great. And uh, we shot the whole thing on loca at his place in his studio. He's got a uh, he's got a, a you know big warehouse with a video wall, an LED screen in the back, so you can literally shoot 
anything. You can make it look like anything you want. And that's what we did the whole thing there um, in, in over a couple of day period. And uh, it came out great, man. I mean, it was kind of a uh, flying by the seat of our pants a little bit as far as how we storyboarded it and stuff. But, um, you know, we're super thrilled with how it came out, man. It's And, and all the response we've heard, you know, I've heard nothing but good things from people who've seen it. You know, people dig it. So um, we're we're actually in the process of doing our second one right now with, with, with Kareem as well. So um, I think... The plan right now is the first, oh, at least four to five singles that we drop. We're, we're going to do videos as well. So, um, you know, we're good two thirds of the way through shooting the, the video for the second single. Um, and man, it's those guys do such good work there that, um, you know, it, it, you can't help but make a great video just working with those dudes. Now, with uh, the new album, uh, Dust Bowl. You guys have any uh you know when that when's the time frame for that a uh, record to be released? Well, it's kind of, it's still a bit up in the air. The record's done, but we're kind of uh uh we're you know we're gonna they call it a waterfall release if you will, where you you leak a single every couple of months or so, and that's what we're doing now. We're gonna you know we dropped our first single uh last month in December. Um, the second one should come out end of February, I think. Um, and it's it, none of it's, you know, we're not setting any set in stone stuff. It's kind of, you know, we have plans about uh, doing videos and things like that. And it's a matter of when we get the video done, we'll drop a single, that kind of deal. But the plan right now is every couple of months, drop another single. Um, if, if sticking with that schedule, that puts the whole record out probably uh, summer, I would say like July, maybe where the rest of it drops. But we, we're going to do the first four or five uh uh, singles first that that's the plan anyway and then uh before we drop the rest and we're also you know we're talking to some labels and stuff like that too so that can always change things you know but um right now that's the current plan now you guys are playing here in la uh this friday night at the uh viper room talk to me a little bit about that show and how that was organized and what fans can expect oh yeah man um so we were going to be in town. It's NAM week. So we're, we're going to be in town for NAM anyway. And uh, uh, the guy I was talking about uh, earlier, Kareem K, that the, did our video, he has a fantastic band as well. And they're going to be playing there that night and uh, at the Viper Room. And he, you know, said, hey, man, you guys want to jump on this bill? And we're like, yeah, of course, you know, we're going to be there anyway. So that, that's how that's how it all started out. But, um, uh, you know, I, I've never been to the Viper Room, so looking forward to it, you know. Um, I haven't played in L.A. Man, it's been a long time, like 10, 15 years. So, um, you know, so we're looking forward to it. It should be cool. Um, there's, a you know, the, the bill that night, there's there's quite a few bands on it. I think there's, I want to say there's five, I think. Um, and I'm not familiar with most of them, but I can't tell you. Kareem's band, just called Kareem K., is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, those guys are on the bill along with us. And, uh, you know, I, I would, I'm guessing the rest of the bands are going to be really killer too. So should be a fun night. Now, any other shows that, uh, the band can announce, uh, for the rest of 2024? Uh, man, it's so early. We, uh, um, we're kind of just starting the ball rolling to, uh, as far as booking. Um, we've got a show, yeah, here back here in Houston on February seventeenth with Dangerous Toys, um, which should be killer. Those guys are just outstanding band and a bunch of really cool guys. Um, that uh, we'll do a show with them. A uh, club here in Houston called Acadia um, on February seventeenth, and then uh, let's see, first weekend in March. I don't think we've nailed down the date yet. We're doing another show here in Houston. Uh, for uh it's called godfather fest there's it's for uh uh a club owner here in town uh frank Alouetto that uh he's run like I, man i it's a club called bfe here in houston that is probably the longest running rock club in town probably it's been around for a long 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 time and, and the guy that owns it frankie has just been so amazing to everybody that he's come up playing his venue i played there when i was first starting out 
everybody I know did, you know, and, uh, and, and he's battling cancer right now. So that we're doing a benefit for him there. Uh, we encourage people to come out, um, you know, give, dig down their wallets a little bit to try to help them out. But uh, I'm not sure that's a three day deal. I think it's, I want to say it's March 8th through 10th, I think, but it's that weekend anyway. Um, and I'm not sure which day we're playing, but we'll be playing that as well. And other than that, we're just kind of filling in as we go right now. All right. Well, I want to thank you, Trey, uh, for coming on the show today. It was great talking to you. Yeah. Great talking to you too, man. Appreciate it. Thanks for watching, everybody. Stay heavy.